If you're thinking about dipping your toes into the world of iOS music making, but don't want to spend a small fortune, figuring out what gear is going to give you the best bang for your buck can be tough. What iDevice should you buy? How much should you spend on headphones? What microphone is good for beginners? How much storage do I need? Why does everything with an Apple logo on it cost so much? In this video, I'll recommend the best budget audio gear for getting started with GarageBand on iPad. The cheapest device in Apple's iPad lineup, the 10.2 inch base model iPad still has enough horsepower under the hood to get you up, running and creating. Packing Apple's A10 Fusion chip, great battery life and a headphone jack, you're getting all the features and power you need to create some killer projects in GarageBand. This model also supports the first generation Apple Pencil and has a smart connector for Apple's smart keyboard, which makes this a great all-round device for things like studying and media consumption too. Storage-wise, the 10.2-inch iPad has two options, 32GB of storage or 128GB. If you can stretch to the 128GB of storage, I'd say go for that. Though the limitations of having less space aren't as bad as they used to be now that you are able to use external drives in iPad OS. Your other option here is to buy on the second hand market. Sites like eBay are awash with iPads of different sizes, styles, and prices. I'd recommend going for the 10.5 inch iPad Pro from 2017, which can be bought for around the same price as the base. 10.2 inch model, either second hand or refurbished. You'll get the more powerful A10X chip as well as a 120 hertz screen and more RAM. You'll need a good quality pair of headphones to listen back to and mix the projects you'll be creating in GarageBand. You may be planning to use a pair of Bluetooth headphones to do this with but the latency that comes with using Bluetooth makes this pretty much impossible in practice. Instead, I recommend investing in a pair of Audio-Technica ATH M30Xs. The Audio-Technica M30Xs are closed back headphones and they do a great job of limiting audio bleed, which makes them useful when tracking in close proximity to your microphone. The 40mm drivers mean they pack a good punch without having to drive the volume on your device up too much. Sound-wise, the M30Xs lack any noticeably hyped frequencies. This is a good thing, by the way. You won't find any emphasis on bass or sub-bass frequencies here, neither are there any sparkling highs. While this makes for a rather dull Spotify or movie-watching experience, the Audio-Technicas have a great neutral flat sound that lends itself well to mixing. Microphones, interfaces, keyboards, if you want to attach any of that good stuff to your iPad, you'll need one of these. This is Apple's Lightning to USB 3 camera adapter. It has a lightning connector on one end and a USB-A and lightning port on the other. Attach the USB-A plug from your microphone, audio face or MIDI controller into the USB slot on the adapter and then plug the adapter's lightning plug into your iPad. If the gear you are hooking up is plug and play, GarageBand will recognise it automatically and you'll be able to start using it right away. If it isn't plug and play, GarageBand will throw up this message and you'll need to attach a lightning cable to the adapter and plug it into the mains. An important point here, while you can get cheaper third-party versions of this adapter from Amazon and eBay, I would recommend sticking with Apple's official adapter. Third-party versions of Apple accessories have a bad habit of becoming useless and unusable over time, especially when Apple updates its software. Your choice, but you have been warned.
you have several options of how to proceed here. If you plan to make use of GarageBand's touch instruments and sounds via your iPad's touchscreen and just need a quick and easy way to record your voice, I'd recommend picking up the Blue Snowball Ice USB microphone. It's compact, sounds great and is also plug and play so you can hook it up to your iPad via the USB adapter and get started straight away. The M Audio Keystation Mini is a great little USB MIDI controller that's a fantastic choice if you'd rather trigger GarageBand's sounds with a physical keyboard. If you're looking for a way to attach your guitar to your iPad and make use of GarageBand's huge suite of guitar amps and effects, IK Multimedia's iRig line is a good choice. The higher end iRig HD2 sounds brilliant, but maybe a bit on the pricey side for some. The original iRig, the one that inputs to your iDevice's headphone jack, is no longer available, though it appears to have been cloned and is being resold very cheaply by a multitude of third-party sellers. Make sure you double-check the reviews if you plan to pick up one of these clones to avoid disappointment. Another option is to get yourself a USB audio interface. Probably the best deal out there for the budget-conscious beginner is the Behringer Euphoria Studio Recording Bundle. This bundle comes with a Behringer Euphoria UM2 audio interface, a Behringer C1 condenser microphone, and a pair of HPS 5000 headphones for well under £100 on Amazon. This pack gives you everything you need to get started with recording real audio into GarageBand, though keep in mind that you will need to add power to your adapter for it to work. There you have it. Those are my recommendations for beginners looking to get into making music on iOS on a budget. You can find links to everything mentioned in this video in the description below. What gear did or do you use currently in your iPad setup? Leave a comment below and let me know. If you're just getting started with GarageBand on iPad or iPhone or just want a refresh on the basics, check out my free beginner's guide, Getting Started with GarageBand. I'll put a link to that down below as well. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.